Yes, I'm, I'm speaking with uh, composer Daniel Hart, whose score to Anthem Body Saints is by far, in my opinion, one of the best scores of the year. Uh, Anthem Body Saints reunites Daniel with director David Lowery, uh, which marks their second movie together after Saint Nick. And uh, thanks so much for chatting today, Daniel. I absolutely love the score in the film. Thanks, Kai. It's a pleasure. Uh, so since this is our first time talking, I would love to know uh, what music means to you personally, and how did you end up on the path to film scoring? Um, what music means to me personally, mm, I, I started I started playing the violin when I was uh, three years old. Mm -hmm. Both my parents were musicians. So they started me really early um, learning how to play music, and I took violin lessons all the way growing up. And um, when I was a teenager, I started playing in bands. And then uh, I just kind of never stopped. Like I, I, toured, I toured in bands for most of my 20s. Um, uh, and then when I got into my 30s, um, I started scoring short films for friends. Um, just, I think, I had lots of friends making films who needed music. And I was interested in learning how to do that. So... I scored a bunch of short films and um, kind of learned by trial and error what worked and what didn't. Um, I've always loved film scores, even since I was a little kid. I've, the music in a film could make or break a film for me, my, my enjoyment of it anyway. <laughs> and I, I, even since I was a little kid, I've always, with the movies that I really loved, I've like, when I watched them, for a, a third or fourth time, then I start to really pay attention to the music, and then I start to imagine the scenes from the films without any music in them at all. Right. You know, just right. to try and try and imagine it with just the dialogue and the picture, and and see like what a difference it makes. How how music changes so much about the perception of what we're um, experiencing when we watch a film. Absolutely. Uh, so. Uh, for Anthem Body Saints, it's a magnificent film. It sort of reminds me of like the American uh, New Wave films from like the late '60s to the early '70s. So when when David approached you uh, with the movie, how did he describe it? What were those kind of initial discussions you guys had for the musical goals and what he wanted from you and what you wanted to do? Um, so the the initial discussions between David and I happened um, after he gave me the script and I had the chance to read it. So I already knew some of what was going to what was going to be happening um, as far as the the story of the film and the and the dialogue um, so when we started talking about music for the film i I think it was more like a, it was, musically it was kind of a continuation of the work that we had done together on one of his short films um, a short film called Pioneer mm -hmm. that went to Sundance in two thousand eleven and um when we collaborated on that together, we, we started to develop a, a musical language that I think translated over to um, Saints, even though the, the films are, are very different, the, the stories are not, are not similar, and um, Pioneer is just a, like an extravagant bedtime story, and, and this, is, this is more like a, a very subtle Western. Yeah. Um, but, but even though the, the films are stylistically different, the... The, the David's aesthetic is still the same. You know, he st he still loves a lot of the same shots. He likes um, really in intense close-ups on people's faces when they're talking. Beautiful, warm light, um, and um, sort of uh, a quiet kind of in intensity in uh, in the dramatic nature of the of the dialogue. So, so those kinds of things. Um, translated from one film to the other and, and I feel like musically the same things apply like the types the style of music that would work for one of his films also kind of worked for uh, Saints so when we started talking about music for Saints we were thinking um, of specific instruments um, some of which I used on, on Pioneer so lots of strings because um, I'm a string player by training um, and then I was hearing some low brass as well and then some kind of atmospheric droning. That's what I told him. And he, and he told me that he wanted to have, um, because he was thinking of the film as a kind of like a, a, a folk song or like a folk tale that he was thinking of um, 
banjo and mandolin for the score to use some instruments that often get used in American folk music. Um, and I hadn't, um, after reading the script, I hadn't considered using either one of those instruments. Um, and I, I didn't own them, um, hadn't really played them much before we worked on Saints. But I borrowed some from a friend and, and um, started experimenting with them, you know, after reading the script a couple more times. And as David started sending me rough cuts of the film, I realized that, you know, not only is he a brilliant filmmaker, but he also has a really great sense of of, um, of instrumentation, like what would fit musically for his films, because as soon as I started trying to incorporate mandolin and banjo into the score, it became obvious that it was absolutely the right thing for the film, right voice. Yeah, I mean, it worked absolutely perfectly in the whole thing. It, it Just with the landscape and the cinematography, it all blended uh, so well. And uh, so what about the film... You know, you came on early. You read the script. So, what about what about it? Like, spoke to you the most? Uh, when did you start writing music? Uh, was it the characters, the plot? You know, Bradford Young's brilliant cinematography, like the setting. What really kind of like started your creative process? Um, so, I, yeah, I read the script um, before they started shooting. I visited the set uh, for a couple of days while they were shooting in Louisiana. Um, I think. The first piece that really landed, like I started working on the score in um, September of last year. Once they started editing, basically, basically a week after they started editing the film, David started sending me rough cuts of scenes that that had been edited to a point where he felt like they were getting close. Right. Um, I had made some musical sketches during the summer before before I had seen any footage of the film, just as a like a jumping off point. And um, I had sent those to David and to the producers of the film, just to talk, just to you know, get the ball rolling. Um, we ended up not using any of that music that I'd written during the summer as uh, sketches, but I feel like it was uh, like a necessary step along the way towards finding the right music for the film. So I, I feel like um, one of the first scenes that David sent me was the the montage where. Um, Bob Muldoon, Casey Affleck's character, is going to prison at the same time that Ruth Guthrie, um, Rooney Mara's character, is having their baby. And it, you know, it cuts back and forth between Bob in prison and Ruth um, having a baby. And um, when I started working on that scene, uh, I, I, f I figured out pretty early on that it needs some kind of um, some, some rhythmic element, some kind of percussion to like move it forward. Mm -hmm. um, as, as it was cutting back and forth between these two scenes. And I had used some, um, some hand percussion, some clapping and, and knee slapping and like chest clumping and things like that on, on a one short scene in Pioneer, David's short film. So I thought, well, I'll just try that again, you know, because I don't, I just didn't have any other uh, percussion instruments uh, around me that day when I was writing the music for that draft of the score. So I just, I just thought, well, I'll just try this. And, and I did some hand clapping for that uh, prison scene. And, I, and I, um, after I finished it and I, and I listened to it, I felt, I felt good about it. So I sent it off to David and to the producers. And the, the response was just so positive. Like they, they felt like it had really hit on some musical themes that, that went really well with everything that was happening else, everything else that was happening in the film. Um, so that, that I feel like that was the first point at which I, I found something musically. I, like I found the, the puzzle piece that fit with the other puzzle pieces that were already there. And yeah, the, cla the clapping as percussion was, I think, it was brilliantly. It's always been like a favorite of mine, and it's kind of becoming more popular in kind of like indie rock. But I think when right. it's used, I used like this kind of very intimately, and uh, it just felt personal to the characters. And just the the sound of organic, you know, it's, you can tell it's a human clapping, and it's just kind of like when you use vocals, you have that human presence in it. And uh, yeah. So, but it's just funny that you just you just didn't have anything else lying around to, yeah, to do it. I just didn't have anything. I you know I, I that day when I was working on it, I had like a, a mobile recording set up in somebody's bedroom because uh -huh. that was the space that was available to me that day, um, and I just didn't have anything else around. So I just I I used myself. <laughs> That's really cool. <laughs> Um, so, but the, the, so the characters in, in this film, they're like, they're very kind of severely flawed. And I think quite honestly, I actually disliked, I think Bob's character pretty much the whole time. And I was kind of just 
very uh, focused on Ruth and just, you know, hoping that she makes the right decisions and, you know, you want her to, to kind of be free almost. Uh, where did you look at, where did you pull that emotion from, like, from the characters? What, which characters really spoke to you? Um, I think, I think um, early on the, the character that I related to the most, or the one that I was most interested in was... Um, Ben Foster's character. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a, he's, he did a great job. Yeah, it's just he's just so understated, um, but you can tell that there's obviously a whole lot going on underneath that guy. And, he, and um, Ben and I even had some conversations early on when they were shooting the film. He wanted to uh, learn to play the guitar a little bit, which mm-hmm. he does. He plays the guitar in the film a little bit, um, and he didn't. Um, ben doesn't know how to play the guitar, so he he learned how to play some chords specifically for this film, and we were talking about some chords that might work well for his character. And he, you know, he shared with me um, in conversation some of his process of trying to figure out what this um, deputy was about, and and you know, some he had even like picked out some songs that um, he thought Pat Wheeler might have liked or you know some songs that might have meant something to his character mm-hmm. and I I guess me you know having to supply the score for the film that really resonated with me just that as an actor that was one thing that he was thinking about and then and then also within the film the character himself Pat Wheeler is just such a a complex really sweet guy trying to do the right thing also trying to do his job trying to wrestle with um, you know some feelings that he may not completely understand, right. but trying to be honest the whole time, just like trying to be completely honest. I really admired that about that character. Yeah, I mean, it was a, his character was. I mean, he, he's always a great actor too. I love Ben Foster from everything yeah. he's done, like Three Ten to Yuma. I think, oh man, he's really good. Um, so, what's your take on the title of the film? Did David explain it? Did he talk? What do you think the title means? Or what is? It, do you know what it means? <laughs> Well, he has explained it. Um, we've done some Q and A's together um, after f- film screenings, and that question always comes up. So mm-hmm. I can tell you what his answer is, okay. um, which which I think is is the real answer, which is that the the title of the film "Ain't Them Body Saints" um, is supposed to be like the title of a folk song, mm. because that's the way that David was thinking of the film, like kind of like a morality tale or some kind of right. folk narrative that comes from a um, like a Midwestern or Southern um, American tradition, and and the the actual words he picked um, because he thought they were lyrics to another folk song that he'd heard, um, but he had actually misheard the lyrics. Um, someone asked him what the actual lyrics were, and he couldn't remember what the actual <laughs> lyrics were to the to the original song. But he that's what he had thought those lyrics were, and so he thought he was pulling. The lyrics from another folk song and, and naming his movie after them. Wow. Okay, that's really cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so you have another film coming up, uh, The Sideways Light. Another very I looked it up. A very interesting film. It looks very interesting. What can you tell us about that? Uh, the Sideways Light is um, it's a it's a feature from an Austin filmmaker named uh, Jennifer Reeb, mm-hmm. and um, she um, reached out to me um, because of of Saints, she knew David and some of the other people who worked on Saints. Um, in fact, one of the stars of the Sideways Light had a small part in in Saints, um, and and uh, it's a it's kind of a it's not a, a, a horror film. It's but it is a haunting film. There, it's a film about a a house that's haunted by past generations of the people who live in the in the house now and. Um, it's about a a woman in her late twenties who comes back to this house in a small town in Texas to take care of her mother, who seems to be suffering from early onset Alzheimer's, um, quite intensely suffering. So um, she moves back into this house to take care of her mother. She pretty early on realizes that not only is her mother having some mental problems, but in fact, the house itself is kind of a a mental problem oh, for, well, all, that's, that's for all for all the characters. <laughs> it's another another southern takes place in the south. Is that going to influence your music? It, it again? takes place in the south. 
uh, no, no real Western elements. Okay. Um, it's, more, it's more like a ghost story than, than uh -huh. it is a folk. Um, but not meant to be one just to, not, right. not a shock and awe kind of story, more like a, a mystery. Yeah, yeah, that's what I, I took from it. I just I saw I had the, I read the synopsis. I'm like, this doesn't sound like a horror film. It could be really interesting. So I'm looking forward to, to what you cook up for it. Um, I really enjoyed working on it. I, I finished it up uh, beginning of August. My, my work's all done. and I, okay. I, was really, I really in, enjoyed the whole process. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's slightly different from Saints. Um, you know, I tried out some more... Um, I tried out some... Uh, body percussion as well for this yeah. one in one of the scenes and it really didn't work actually at all it you know this uh, the film has a much more otherworldly quality to it than Saints did and having something as organic as hand claps and it just didn't fit right oh, that's, so yeah it's just you gotta so you just toss it out <laughs> yeah you know, the, the, the director was like this is too organic and I was like I, I can see exactly what you mean. So we came up with some other interesting sounds um, to replace that, to, to make something rhythmic. Um, and then there's also, um, just because it, f it ended up fitting a lot more piano uh, in this score, um, whereas I don't, I don't think there's any in Saints. Well, that's, I can't, uh, hopefully I get to hear it. Hopefully they do not a release. They, uh, they did a great release for Anthem Body Saints. And, uh, um, well, to, to wrap it up, I always like to ask composers uh, this one question. If you could score any film ever made with no disrespect to the original composer or the score itself, which film would you choose? Um, oh, man. Um, uh, probably Casablanca. Oh, wow. Okay. Great one. Because it, I think it's maybe the best film ever made. And so if I was going to work on any film, I guess I'd want to work on the best film ever made. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, that's a great answer. That's one I, of almost said, I almost said The Princess Bride. <laughs> so that would be even a better answer. That's a great answer. Because I, because, but I, I decided no because I just, I love the, that score too much. Like I, I could not possibly improve upon the score for The Princess Bride. I think it's a work of pure genius. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, Daniel, thank you so much uh, for your time and, and talking uh, really uh, enjoyed getting some insight behind your music and it's and uh, I'm looking forward to everything you do from now on it's really gra glad that I found your work so thank you so much thank you Kai thanks it was a pleasure to talk to you